See, these little mini PCs will become dirt cheap in the very near future because they will not support Windows 10 any longer. And I think it's the best time to get yourself one of them because they are incredible value for your home lab. I remember when I first got into home lab and honestly, I had absolutely no idea what I needed to buy. I thought I needed to buy a expensive dedicated server with loads of cores, loads of RAM. And yeah, I felt like it was way out of my budget. Most of you watching this are probably still beginners when it comes to home lab stuff. And to be honest with you, I still consider myself a beginner because there's so much to learn and it's never ending. But as my experience has grown, I started to really appreciate these little mini PCs. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at this Dell Optiplex 3050. Now the cool thing with this little mini PC is that I got it completely for free. It was meant to be recycled, the hard drive was broken and I kind of just said, can I have it? And there we go, there it was. Now I did need to get power supply, but to be honest with you, they're relatively cheap on Amazon. Now specs wise, I did upgrade it ever so slightly. It's got two eight gig sticks of RAM now. It's got an i5 7500T and the T bit is important because it is a lower wattage TDP CPU. So it's only got 35 watts. Now it's got plenty of ports, plenty of expandability. It takes an SSD as well as an M.2 drive and it's got a little M.2 wireless adapter that we are gonna make the most out of because honestly there's so much stuff that you can do with it now disassembling the pc is pretty straightforward you literally unscrew that one screw on the back and that's it and you're in now as much as i'm not a fan of these proprietary systems this one is actually pretty cool dell are actually quite good at creating those little mini systems and making them really easy to disassemble you can take the cpu cover off really easily you can take the ram out really easily and also i love the ssd caddy now the first thing i'd recommend is if you're getting one of those out of a corporate environment they most likely have not been serviced ever so first thing i'd recommend is just take that plastic cover off and also take off the heatsink remove the thermal paste give it just a big old cleanup. Now, one of the first things I checked is what I can actually do with this and how I can modify it because the standard form is all well and good, but I've got bigger things that I want to do with this. So stay tuned for my upcoming videos where I'll actually be building a router with this. So a router generally will need a second ethernet port. And luckily there was an adapter that you can get. And this is this long cable that I've got installed here into one of the smaller M.2 E key cards. Now this is normally where a wireless card would go, but I've taken that out and slotted this one in. Now the bracket on the back isn't the nicest of things, I'll give you that. What I'm using is a 3D printed part and it just slots in nicely. And then I have a second ethernet port. And honestly, it just makes a world of difference to the capabilities of this little mini PC. Now the next thing I wanted to tackle with that little mini PC is storage and I need one to run the OS and the other one will be my storage drive. Now my OS is most likely going to go onto the SSD and I've got a spare 128 gig lying around so I'm just going to utilize that. For the storage drive I've got a 500 gig M.2 but it's still a SATA drive but it's more than enough for our needs. Now you could populate this with an M.2 NVMe drive but to be honest with you it's going to be plenty for our needs. And you can see that this is now starting to really come together into a nice little unit. It doesn't have a lot of power draw, it's got a second ethernet port to massively expand our capabilities and also it's got plenty of storage to run it as a bit of a NAS server as well as being able to run the operating system on it. And speaking of operating Operating system, we are going to be installing my favorite operating system, especially if you're just starting out. Now, the learning curve of this operating system is a little bit steep, I'll give you that, but it is absolutely incredible once you master it. And I'm talking, of course, about TrueNAS and more specifically, TrueNAS Scale. TrueNAS is an incredible piece of software. And honestly, I absolutely love it. And they've recently implemented a feature that just blows it out of the water. Honestly, it's just so good. Now, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm not really going to go through the installation process too in depth. It's pretty straightforward. You just click next multiple times, set your IP address, and then make sure you set a super secure password. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've installed it on the smaller SSD because I want to keep the M.2 drive for any kind of bulk storage and my ZFS pool that we're going to create later to be able to run it as a NAS. Now, the really cool thing with TrueNAS is once you've set your IP address, you will be able to access it from any web browser in the same network. And then once we've got TrueNAS up and running, I literally just created a pool and then a data set so I can access that from anywhere. You can then go ahead and set up an SMB share 
and then you can mount it on any computer on the local network. Now, as amazing as TrueNAS is when it comes to storage, it's got an extra trick up its sleeve, and that is its massive app library. Now, as you grow with your home lab, hopefully you'll learn how to use Docker and how to utilize it. But for the time being, going into the app section and just installing any app that you want from their massive app catalog, because they cover the vast majority of them, is so super easy. And it's literally just a one-click solution. You don't need to mess around with anything. Now, the ones that I've got installed are Tailscale. That allows me to set up a VPN. I'm going to do a whole separate video on it. I've got Uptime Kuma running on it, which allows me to monitor all my devices on my network. So I can, for example, put my router in there, I can put other computers in there, and I can always see whether they're up or whether they've had any downtime. Now, Open Web UI is another app that I absolutely love and I use it daily, and it allows me to just plug in my own API key from either Claude or ChatGPT or any of the amazing other ones out there, and I can just use those for a lot less money. Now, another app that I've installed is Cloudflare, and Cloudflare is so amazing because what it allows me to do is it allows me to access all my internal services, such as my Open Web UI or Uptime Kuma, from outside my home network without the need of a VPN, without the need to port forward. And last but not least, and again, there will be a dedicated video coming for this, is AdGuard, and AdGuard is essentially a way to manage and filter traffic going out into the internet. So you can set up block lists, you can have it do many, many things, you can have it stop advertising from coming in. And these are essentially the main services that I run on my home network. Now with Windows 10 will no longer officially be supported on anything below an eighth gen TPU. So you will be able to pick these up for cheap because companies are gonna be getting rid of them. There's not gonna be any security updates for any of these and everyone's migrating to Windows 11. So these would be flooding the market. And I've already got one here, as I mentioned, I got completely for free. But in the future, I'm looking to pick up two or three more of these and then create a cluster. But stay tuned for that because I've also got a video coming on how to create a cluster and high availability and kind of just really make sure that your home lab is mm, incredible. Now, now would be the time to kind of point you into another direction towards another video. But this is my very first video. So I appreciate you getting to this point and watching it. And I'd really appreciate it if you could drop me a follow and a like it would help me out massively because I'm looking to produce these videos more regularly and give you amazing content.